going back to the 1920s and I'm going to show you a completely authentic makeup tutorial for this era. Now many of you know that I do, I do a lot of research for my videos, a lot as it is. So this video is no exception. It has been heavily researched. Every fact that I'm sharing with you in this video is authentic and verified. Before we get started on the tutorial, I just want to share some background information with you on this era so that you do get a better understanding of how makeup has evolved in our history. Now, in 1910 is when a lot of the products that we use today were invented, including mascara, lipstick, blush, eyeshadow, eyeliner, all of those great makeup tools but they really didn't come onto the scene until the 1920s. And a lot of that had to do with marketing and movies of the era. Another reason makeup didn't really become popular until the 1920s is because prior to the 1900s, there was still a stigma associated with it and it wasn't good. In the 1800s and more along the lines of the Edwardian period is when you see makeup being worn mainly by prostitutes and actresses real women of societal status did not wear a lot of makeup because they didn't want to be associated with prostitutes or actresses. That was like a huge no-no during that time period. And actually a lot of stores that sold cosmetics had back doors where these women would go to purchase their cosmetics. They didn't even want to be seen going into the store, let alone coming out with the products. The 1920s was a post-war era. And in this time period is when you started to see the sex ratio among men and women become skewed. And so there was a lot of emphasis placed on sexual beauty. A lot of the publications of the time period were telling women to apply a lot of makeup to their faces in order to be able to compete with men for jobs in the workforce. And so what you're seeing among women when it comes to makeup in the 20s is an artificially created face. They placed a lot of emphasis on dark eyes, dark lips, pale skin, they really liked the contrast that was played between all of those elements. So knowing all of that history, let me show you this tutorial that showcases the 1920s beautifully. The 1920s is really the birthplace of the modern day smoky eye that we've all come to know and love so much. And it was characterized by being very dark and extremely black, sometimes gray. This is also the time period when eyeliner was the big thing of the day and when it really came onto the scene because during this time there was a lot of discoveries happening in Egypt so everyone in the period was obsessed with everything Egyptian. So to begin this look and mimic that type of history I'm going to be using a black eyeliner pencil. Black eyeliner was the key makeup tool. What I'm going to do is line the upper lash line here with it. Also put little dots on the lower lash line and then smudge it out. And don't worry about being accurate. You can see that I've missed some spaces already. That's okay because you are going to be smudging this out so it doesn't need to be perfect. And it's best to apply little bitty dots instead of fully lining that lower lash line because when you go to smudge these dots together it's going to be less of an intense effect. I'm just taking a smudging brush looks like that and we're going to go along and just smudge out the black eyeliner. And don't worry about looking like a raccoon because I look like a raccoon right now. But I'm going to be cleaning this up with concealer when we are done with the eyes. And for the eyeshadow in this look, I'm going to be layering two different MAC eyeshadows. The first is going to be Silver Ring and the second is going to be Print. So I'm going to start by applying Silver Ring right onto the lid and go over where we smudged out that black pencil. And we're going to carry silver ring up past the crease, more towards the brow bone. Once you have that color down, then you can go back with print. And we're only going to be applying print onto the lid portion of the eye. So right there, 
You don't want to carry this color above the crease. This is really just going to be focused more on the lid. Yes, the 20s was very daring. It's probably what I love most about the makeup of that era is that they were not afraid to take risks. To blend out the harsher edges of Silver Ring up here, I'm going to be using the MAC 217 brush with Blanc Type. And to add some more emphasis to the lower lash line here, I'm going to go back with the MAC 263 brush and MAC Typographic and smudge just slightly once again on that lower lash line. Now the 1920s is when you first saw women beginning to pluck their eyebrows, but the true art of plucking really didn't occur until the 1930s. They just did minor plucking in the 20s. And what was also characterized in the 20s with the eyebrows is that the line out here was drawn down toward the temple. So it actually dipped down further, right more about there compared to today's modern brow, which ends right at the corner of your eye. The eyebrows in the 20s were also extremely thin, so I'm not going to take the time to fill them in like I normally would. I'm just basically taking one swipe of my pencil here, and that's it. I didn't find this in my research, so this is just my personal opinion, but seeing how far they allowed the brow to dip down there reminds me of some of the Egyptian makeup that you would have seen from that time period as well. So this more than likely was also inspired by the Egyptian obsession that they had during this time period. Mascara was a new thing of the 1920s, and no woman could resist darkening her lashes. And actually, before mascara became really popular, they would take household products like petroleum jelly, which we now know as Vaseline, and mix it in with soot or charcoal to get a really nice black mixture. And then they would apply that to the base of their lashes to darken them up with a fine brush. Towards the middle of the 1920s is when you start to see mascara come out in tube, wax, cake, and liquid form. And the difference between the wands back then and the wands now is that in the 1920s, the mascara wands didn't have any sculpting abilities whatsoever. They were really just there to help apply this dark liquid to the lashes, thicken them up, and make them look fuller. So women had to rely on tools separately, like eyelash curlers, to help sculpt the lashes and give them definition and shape. So I'm going to go ahead and curl my lashes here with a shuyumura. You know I can't say that word. Shuyumura. I'm going to apply a waterproof mascara. And funny enough, this is from Max Factor, who was an innovator in this time period in terms of makeup. And to add even greater emphasis to the lashes, I'm going to cheat a little bit and apply some false eyelashes to really make the eyes stand out. And I'm wearing a pair from a new lash line. These will be formally announced next week, so do stay tuned. This pair is called Moonlight Dancing. So it's just a sneak peek -aroo. In the 1920s, the whiter you could get your skin to look, the better it was. They would go out of their way to make their faces really pale, really white. And they really liked this look back during this time period because it allowed the eyes to really pop out because the eyes were really dark and the lips to pop out because the lips were also very dark and we'll get to that in a few minutes. There were no bronzers, there was no tanning lotions, nothing like that. It was actually opposite of what you see now. And I actually miss that kind of thinking myself. So I'm applying just my regular foundation. which I'm already super duper white as it is, so <laughs> I really don't think I need to go a shade whiter to show you a really pale complexion, because I'm there, baby. And honestly, I'm going to be honest with you, they really packed the makeup on during this time period, so don't be afraid to go heavy, cake it on, build it up. And to set my face today, I'm going to be using Ben Nye's Neutral Set. Great face powder, keeps the face matte for a long time.
Prior to the 1920s, women were using something called elixir blushes, and these were very messy and hard to work with. But eventually they were replaced in the 1920s with creams, liquids, powders, and even rouge papers. And the invention of the spill-proof container and compacts for blushes that we all use today is what made them more popular during this time period. And when women applied blush to their face in the 1920s, they would do it in circular motions, right about there on the face. The angular blush that we all have become accustomed to was not something that they used in this time period. And by putting the blush in round circles on the face here, it helped the face appear rounder, which was that desired look. Using that information, I'm using a Sigma F40 contour brush with Max Tenderling. And I'm using a very light colored blush. This is a very pale pink, really. It's a barely there type color. But you could use brighter, bolder pinks if you wanted to be a little more over the top with the look because they weren't afraid of using makeup in this time period. It was highly, highly emphasized. In the 1920s, they had a preoccupation with the lips. They were obsessed with shaping the mouth. And there was actually something invented during this time period called metal lip tracers. And these ensured a flawless application when women would apply their lipstick. And actually during this time period is when the mirrored lipstick containers were invented. Depending on which end of the 1920s you're focusing your look on is gonna dictate which shade of lipstick that you choose. If you're going for an early 20s look, then you'd want to pick a deep classic red, deep brownish red, plums or oranges. But if you're focusing more on the end of the 1920s, this is when you started to see raspberry colors and medium red shades. But of course, I'm going to go with the early 20s for this look, and I'm choosing a deep, dark, beautiful red in Max Brick O La. During the 1920s is when you saw a new lip trend taking place, and this is called the Cupid's Bow. What it was was that they drew the outline of the lips smaller than the actual lip pattern was, and they placed heavy emphasis on the center of the lips, both on the bottom lip and the top lip. So the Cupid's Bow was very emphasized. This was made popular by a lot of Hollywood actresses of the time, specifically Clara Bow. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and apply the red lipstick, and then I'll define that Cupid's bow with a lip brush. And I got some big lips, so I'm not going to fill in all of my lips. I'm actually going to leave some of my lips outside of the outline. Okay, so I have the shape formed here. And I'm going to go in with the lip brush and really emphasize that shape here. So I'm not sure how well you can see this, but you can see that the lips are emphasized up there on the cupid bow. I didn't fill in all of my lips on the side, so it does cut down further than it should. And same thing on the side, it cuts in further right there on the bottom. And what I did was I applied the lipstick and then I went back with some of my foundation and just cleaned up some of the edges along where I wanted it to really be thinned out. I hope you found this helpful today, and if you missed the 1940s tutorial that I did, I'll put that link below for you as well. And let me know where you want our time machine to travel to next. You never know what era we're going to end up in in an upcoming video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Are you fed up with expensive experimentation? How much money have you spent on eyeshadows you don't know how to wear or you've become bored with? Well, now there's a way to save hundreds of dollars annually and eliminate eyeshadow guesswork. Discover over 1,000 pictures of combinations using eyeshadows from popular brands like MAC, Urban Decay, The Balm, Lorac, and so many more. With new combinations added weekly, you will never run out of ideas. Visit myeyeshadowconsultant.com and become a member today.